school has told us about a, a new rule which said you can't say you can't play and I thought he said can you explain to me what that means he said does that mean I have to play with everybody and I thought to myself well I said to him and I don't know where these words came from they just came out of nowhere and I just blurted out to my own peril on my I mind you and to the to the excited ears of a six-year-old I said rules are for idiots and oh boy, I've never forgotten those, those words. Rules are for idiots. Now, I wonder where those words came from because they came instinctively from me and, <laughs> and I've wondered ever since. So that was back in 2004. And I thought to myself at that particular point, I thought, why do we have all these rules? Don't we know how to behave? Well, this whole idea was revisited by me in 2012 when many of us in this space um, understood that the world shifted a little bit and so did mine because I'm a lawyer and there I was walking down my main street and I'm dressed up you know in my suit and I've got my leopard print heels on because I just rock those heels I love them until I went to cross at the pedestrian crossing and tripped over <laughs> down I went and there I was on my hands and knees in the middle of that pedestrian crossing in my suit. I, I was hoping those stripes on the crossing would open up and swallow me whole. But alas, they didn't. And a driver had to get out of his car and pick me up because I was that embarrassed. So off I went to my chiropractor because I really hurt my knees. I, I went off to my chiropractor for my bruised ego and knees. And he said to me, well, Virginia, you're going to have to go and do some yoga. And I thought, well, that'll be like watching paint dry. See, I was a Zumba girl. I was shaking that thing, but apparently no more shaken because the knees wouldn't allow it. So off I went to my first yoga class and um, I found it quite difficult. It was quite a difficult workout actually. But when I left there, I, um, I wondered why a few breaths and stretches, poses, made me feel so good. So as any good lawyer would, I wanted more evidence. Why was this, why was this a good thing? I mean, of course, you know, the, the instructor was telling us all these fabulous ideas, but I was, that was not sinking in at the time. So what did I do? I go off and do a, a diploma in yoga teaching. 12 months later, you don't do anything by halves as lawyers. 12 months later, I had to intellectualize yoga. <laughs> <laughs> How funny is that, right? You're thinking that's very funny. I'm thinking it's funny too now. Uh, but that changed my life. That changed my life and my, my perspective on life entirely. And I had real difficulty then bringing the idea, the idea of ahimsa, non-harm, back into legal practice. How was I going to do that? You see, law is about divide and conquer, crush, kill and destroy. Whereas yoga says, bring no harm, ahimsa. So look, I was researching about wellness for lawyers, all these wonderful things. And down the rabbit hole I went literally, and it was exhausting. Uh, but I think as any seeker does, and I think we've all done it too, it's just like you're looking for the, these answers. And then I came across a quote from Gandhi who said, the true function of a lawyer is to unite parties riven asunder. Unite parties, I thought, hey, we don't do that in law because it's fear-based. And why is it fear-based? Well, lawyers are trained in left brain thinking, logical, you know, analytical, critical thinking. Then they're given um, a set of problems to deal with which are devoid of emotion. Lawyers aren't allowed to talk about emotion. So effectively what you have is half a human dealing with half a problem. And well, then what does that look like? You know, that that is not connecting with humans at all. And I suppose people have wanted their lawyers to do that because they want their lawyers to stand up for them in court and be their armour plating. They want them to stand up in court and be strong and go into battle for them. 
people seem to think this idea that lawyers having emotion will mean they'll end up at, as a puddle of tears on the court, courtroom floor. Well, no, that's not the kind of emotion we're talking about. So how did I get to the point where I was going to think about how I could bring these two together? How could we operate in law on a more humane basis? Because that was certainly not happening. And that's a big story. So effectively, I looked at what is fear. What is fear? Law, law is operating in fear base. I'm protecting you from me, me versus you, win, lose, all those opposites, the separation. What is fear? Well, we have irrational fears. Yes, we don't want to jump off a building because that's going to hurt and probably die. And we don't want to hop in with the, in the lion's den, unless you're Daniel, of course. And um, so they're rational fears. They're things in the now moment that we're afraid of. And you think, yeah, well, that's, you know, preservation of life. And that's a good idea, probably. Then, of course, we have the irrational fears. And these are the ones I'm talking about. These are the ones lawyers get to deal with. These are the ones where you bring your emotional immaturity to the table. So what are irrational fears? They're fears that prevent us from self-expression. They're the unconscious fears we carry around with us and we all have them. That's the purpose, I believe, in my belief, of this entire existence. We're born in, as loving beings and then ultimately we disassociate, well, we dis, um, we uh, disintegrate, we separate from ourselves and we create these little rules until we mature and then we go find, looking for them again because we want to find our way back to love. But so what I want to talk about is these unconscious fears, how to become fearless, how to lose those fears to become emotionally mature. So what I've got is... Is, um, I just want you to, for one moment, if everyone can just take just one moment, this is a really fun little exercise. Take a beautiful breath. We love breathing. We've all forgotten how to breathe, of course. Breathing into our up here. This is where our lawyers are operating too, all up in our chests and huff and puff and rather than our full bodies. Our full bodies, we're disconnected from those. So bringing yourself into your full body and imagining just for one moment and just sit for one moment and think, what would life be like if I had no fear at all? Now, just feel that. How does that feel? I like it. I, I'm pretty much in that space because I've worked with this for quite a while now. And I liken it to a rubber band. So you've got an elastic band. It's all floppy. And that's how.